Hello everybody and welcome. Uh, got a quick video I wanted to make for everyone that uh, basically it allows you a simpler approach to the interlinear scriptures analyzer in a PDF format. So this is a view only. You'll be able to look at it. Uh, you won't be able to do like a search on it uh, like we have done previously in the interlinear scriptures analyzer app and program but this is handy and you should put this link uh, I'll have it down in the description into your favorites so when you want to do a study or actually see what uh, the original word said instead of a translation and the influences therein you can actually go down and have a look and then uh, maybe make a better decision about what uh, scripture really says so basically this is it and I wanted to give you just a really quick example uh, another one of my favorite scriptures uh, go up here to judges I'll click on two and uh, basically when I get here I, I hit this plus it a few times because I don't see too good <laughs> I'll slide this over and get in here okay so I'm gonna go down scroll down to two and seven and the reason that I like this <coughs> is because it reveals something. It reveals something very powerful. Um, one of the second steps in the Father's instruction for us to live our lives has to do with names. Primarily His name. But uh, when we think about names, there is uh, a lot of disagreement, I guess, on how you'd say different names. Uh, a lot of disagreement on about uh, who the J-E-S-U-S -S is. And some people might say uh, Yeshua, Yahushua. Some people say Yahusha. So this is one of those examples. In Judges 2.7, I was doing a study. It just so happened that this particular verse has two renderings of the same name. It has Yahusha and Yahushua. All right, so I'm going to point them out to you. But first, let's, let's just kind of get a handle on what we're talking about here uh, in the translation for the, the common understanding. Uh, so Judges 2, 7, And the people served Yahuwah all the days of Joshua and all the days the elders that outlived Joshua. This is the same person those that outlived Joshua and who had all the great works of Yahuwah Elohim uh, that he did for Yisrael. Alright, now this is huge. Uh, when we take and we try to figure out like who's who and all of this kind of stuff and how to say the name, this is one example that is invaluable. So when you take a look up here, I hope you can see this. But it's basically the name which is translated Joshua. Uh, pay attention here when you look up at the top. Okay, it's basically the Yod He Wa Shin Ayin. Okay, now I want you to take a, a look at down here on this one. Notice this transliteration is. Yahusha. And this one down here is Yahushua. See that difference there? Now, what's important here is this final Wa right here. There's two of the Wa, which makes the U sound. There's two of them in this example. And up here, there's only one in this example. Okay, so there's a difference here. We're talking about the same person, and they spelled his name differently. They pronounced his name differently. And what's really uh, interesting about this whole thing, especially since they're both found in the same verse, written by the same person at the same time. So what's different? It has to do with the... Uh, uh, like Joshua speaking of him when he was alive and then 
after he is gone and dead. Okay, in the days after, this is this is huge, everybody. In the days after Joshua, they called him Yahushua. Okay, but when the days of Joshua, they called him Yahusha. So it has to do with uh, kind of like, uh, if you will, uh, a tense. You know, past tense, present tense. So when Joshua was alive, they called him Yahusha. But after he was dead, no longer existing, and diminished, they called him Yahushua. I'm going to jump on another one here real quick and kind of connect this together. Uh, basically go up here and I'll go back and I'm going to go to Exodus uh, 20. And scroll down here to about verse 7. Let's get it up here where we can see it. 20 and 7. Okay, here we go. Now, <coughs> this is primarily talking about names as well. So, let me get over here and read the, the common rendering. Uh, Thou shalt not take the name of Elohim, Yahuwah thy Elohim in vain. Vanity. For Elohim will not hold him guiltless, so you will not be innocent, to take his name in vain. That word vain. Okay, what, what does it say over here in the original scriptures? Okay. Latasha Atashim Yahuwah Elohim La Shua. Do you see this? Okay. L uh, four or two, you know, whatever you want to think. Shua. Okay. So you don't Shua futility. It's vanity over there in the common translation. And down here it's Shua again. Futility. Futility and Shua. You don't Shua the Father's name. Now what's interesting about this is when you get in and you start talking to some people about it and they say, well, it doesn't say that, you know, the vowel pointings, actually it's a shav. Well, in the original it wasn't a shav. In the original it was a shua. What's important about this is it says that you're not supposed to Shua the name of Yahuwah. See, you don't Shua diminish, bring low, kind of like in the name, for example, in Yahshua or Yahushua as compared to Yahusha. This is huge, people. You need to make this connection and understand because. You can always tell those people who haven't really done their homework, who rely on other people for their understanding. And uh, a person's understanding is only as good as their resource. So if you have a corrupted resource, your understanding is going to be corrupted. And the only way to have the purity of understanding is to go back to the purest form that we have available and apply it to our lives. We don't take the Father's Word and change it to meet our understanding and create our own God in essence. We are the ones that are supposed to do the changing and we're supposed to become like Him. Okay? This whole philosophy thing about Him putting all of this thing in his in our hearts, it's, uh, it's abstract philosophy. It has no concrete meaning. It's ineffective and it's not applicable, so it's basically just a fairy tale and a myth. It does not apply. And when you do a study about the concrete concepts of the Father, you can see it. You take it literal and you apply it. So this is huge, people. I'm going to just jump in here another really, really quick example about this. Because when we look at things like this, I'm going to go down to the book of Isaiah. Because it just so happens in the book of Isaiah, it defines his name as Yeshayahu. 
Well, wait a minute. How do you say Joshua? You say Yahusha or Yahushua in the past tense. Let's take a look at Isaiah. Yahusha. Right there, folks. So it's Yod Shin Ayan. Yasha. Oh, wait a minute. Where did I see this? Oh, it was back there in, in Yasha Yahu. Yahusha. Well, if you take this front part and flip it around to the other part, then you basically get Joshua. So, Yasha Yahu is kind of like Yahusha inverted. Now, we all know that that name Yahusha is also the name that's mostly applied to our uh, Hamashiach, not to be confused with Hamashiach or Moshiach. And uh, we can get into that study at another time, but I just want to make sure that everybody sees this connection. Names are important. We're going to do the Father's name real quick. But I just wanted to basically show you this program. I'm going to put the description down there below. It's invaluable as well. This uh, is an internet application. It's not an application. It's actually just an internet PDF site. And uh, you can't really download it, but it's really easy to use. And it doesn't use a lot of memory to be able to use it either. So I hope you like this. Uh, share it. Comment. You know, Tell your friends about it. And study it and learn it. Let's get back to that ancient path that the Father said was for us and come out of Babylon and all the deception of the Western mentality of philosophy in this world that we live in. Let's get back to the Kadosh, the set-apart word of the Father's language. All right, appreciate you. Thanks. Bye.